Hello everybody. Till now we have been discussing about modeling of circuits and the last class we also did some analysis using the MATLAB software. Let me make a brief review. In modeling a circuit we use the state space approach that is we define the state variables of the circuit or the system which is basically the energy uh, the energy storing variable associated with the energy storing element in the circuit like the C and the uh, L. And after that we obtain the state equation. The state equation is of a standard form which is x dot is equal to Ax plus B u and the output equation y which is equal to Cx plus du. Now after having obtained the state equation, the state equation fully describes the dynamic behavior of the circuit. After obtaining the model, we uh, input this model into MATLAB and then we perform the analysis on uh, in, uh, by viewing in three uh, different domains. One is the time domain that is where the circuit and the signals all these exist that is versus the time axis. The other domain was the frequency domain where you view the magnitude plot and the phase plot with respect to the frequency that is at various frequency what will be the gain of the uh, circuit input, uh, input to output uh, and what is the phase relationship of the output with respect to input. Now these at various frequencies are noted down and plotted and we use the Bode plot in MATLAB to check this out. And then the third domain which is the pole 0 domain, this is uh, an important domain in the sense that you get the uh, idea of the excitation modes because the poles indicate the uh, exponential growth or decay of any disturbance or noise which can occur in the system. So a pole would mean e to the power of minus something t. <laughs> now in the case of uh, the particular example last class we saw that for different parameters for the same circuit for different parameters the pole locations can change. And we saw how a uh, fully damped system uh, gradually became um, a kind of an oscillatory damped oscillatory system because the pole locations shifted started shifting towards the imaginary axis and it also became complex poles. So various analysis can be performed on the circuits. Now in this session today we shall discuss one more important analysis that is the steady state analysis and uh, specifically steady state analysis with respect to sinusoidal signals that is let us say the inputs are sinusoidal in nature which is uh, one of the most common inputs that you will be giving in electrical uh, in the electrical circuits and electrical domain. So for a sinusoidal uh, um, input signal the, uh, because the components are uh, uh, most of the components that you will be using in the circuits are linear, uh, you will see that all the branch currents, node voltages they all will be sinusoidal. However, there will be phase shifts with respect to the uh, input voltage that you will be applying. Now how do we characterize the system? under steady state condition under the constraint that sinusoidal inputs have been given. Some important uh, features of the circuit can be extracted in this mode. So today that will be the focus of the discussion. Giving, given a sinusoidal excitation under steady state condition how will the system behave? Of course it is a very specific uh, nature the problem is a very special case, special case the state equation was a more general case. You can apply the special case to the state equation and obtain the steady state equations. Of course, we will see how we go about doing that in this session. 
Before that we have to uh, understand uh, the concepts of uh, uh, the J, the rotation, uh, the rotation factor uh, which will be used commonly in the steady state analysis. So, let us try to understand the uh, concept of the uh, cos and the sin rotation. Now, let us consider the time domain axis. So, I am having a y axis here and likewise I will also have the x axis and the x axis is time t. Now, here on this x axis let us say that we have a sinusoidal signal like this. Okay. So, let me call this one as V A. This is the sinusoidal signal. Now, the sinusoidal signal can also be imagined as a, a phasor which is rotating in the complex frame. What I mean to say is let us have alongside here a complex frame okay, aligned along this axis. Okay. This also has a orthogonal axis which is the y axis. Now, this being that is you have the real and the imaginary. So, I will call this one as sigma and the imaginary axis. Now, imagine that there is a vector along this axis. Now, this vector we are going to make it rotate in a circular fashion like this. So, this vector is going to be made to rotate in a circular fashion like that all along. Now, we are going to just note down the projection of this vector on the vertical axis and that projection value will be projected onto this uh, time axis as shown here. So, let us see what happens. So, let us say now at this point the projection of this vector at this point is going to be 0. So, let us say this is a point here. Now, let us say this vector has taken a position here. It has moved to a position here. Now, this is the position projection along the vertical axis and we project it along to this and we have a point here. And let us say this vector is now moved and taken this position and uh, its projection on the vertical axis and then taken on to this because this is occurring at a time which is much later than this. This is occurring at a time which is much later than this and therefore, the time progression of these points and so on and you will see that we have the peak occurring at this point that is when it is when this vector is 90 degrees in the complex frame. So, therefore, you see that there is a phase shift of there, there is a phase shift of 90 degrees ninety degrees here also in the time domain uh, the 90 degree point with respect to the 0 point. So, so on if we keep uh, writing all the vectors we get the various points 
which on projection projecting to the time frame will give you will give you the various points here this 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 and so on. So, we can say the sine wave can be considered equivalently as a phasor or a space phasor, we will call this a space phasor because it is in the complex domain and it is rotating continuously in a circle, the amplitude is fixed and that amplitude is equivalent to whatever our maximum amplitude here let us say this is Vm and that amplitude is also Vm. So, uh, with an amplitude of Vm this is rotating and if we just keep taking the projection on the vertical axis and then project it all uh, onto the time axis we get the sinusoidal signal evolving out of this one. Okay. Now, let me consider another space vector simultaneously. When the blue is at this point, I will say that there is a red space vector at this point. Okay. The blue was called V A and let us say the red is called V B. This also has the same amplitude V m and with the amplitude V m when this is also starting to rotate, this is also starting to rotate and once the whole cycle is completed, one period is completed here. So, which means the red space vector on projecting will start from here at time 0 when the blue space vector is starting here, the red space vector is starting here at time 0 and then you would of course have after some time this would have come to this point and then its projection will let us say be along this curve. So, we have something at this. <coughs> and then the vector will progress in this fashion. You have a point here and then the vector progresses here like that. You have a point here and so on. So, we see that we will be obtaining a wave something like that. And keeps going on to like so, you will have a point here, a different corresponding points, point here. Of course, this is this is how it will look like. So, if I am having a space vector starting 90 degrees away from the V A space vector, okay, let us say I have a vector uh, V B which is starting 90 degrees offset or 90 degrees phase shifted with respect to this V A space vector, then you see that the resulting time projection of the space vector tips is a cosine wave. So, what you get here V B is a cos wave. So, V A is a sine wave and V B is a cos wave. Now, let me go to the next page, but before that let me select the wave pattern. and then oh sorry I did not copy it. Okay, let me select the whole thing 
I'll copy, go to the next page, let us paste. Now, now if you say that V A equals V M sin omega T, isn't it? V M sin omega T amplitude Vm and sin omega t. Vb is Vb is Vm cos omega t. Or we could also say that at every instant of time the V A space vector and V B space vector are shifted by 90 that is are phase shifted by 90 degrees. So, you could also write V B is V A into a phase shift of 90 degrees e to the power of j pi by 2 90 degrees which is equal to V A cos pi by 2 plus j sin pi by 2. This is 0 of course, this has a value equal to 0 for is not there, this has a value equal to 1 and therefore, you have which is equal to j V A. So, therefore, if we have V A is equal to sin pi by 2 V M sin omega t and V B equal to V M cos omega t, we could also say that V B is equal to J V A or which is equal to J V M sin omega T. This is a useful relationship which you will be using uh, a lot in the sinusoidal um, steady state analysis. Where will we come across such a thing? Now, let us say for example, we have d by dt of V A, which is equal to d by dt V M sin omega t. This is equal to V M omega cos omega t which is equal to omega into V m cos omega t which is equal to omega into j V m sin omega t or which is equal to j omega V a. So, d by dt of V a is going to result in j omega V a. So, what does it mean? That wherever you have d by dt, you are going to get this term. So, we can have a mechanism where we replace d by dt's with j omega to obtain the sinusoidal steady state uh, equations. So, in the state equation, wherever there is d by dt, replace it with j omega. That will give you the sinusoidal steady state equations. We will see that shortly. Now, we have two major dynamic components with the capacitance and the inductance in the electrical circuits. Uh, 
the capacitance which is storing the potential energy and the inductor which is storing the kinetic energy by virtue of the flow in it. So, let us consider first the capacitance. So, we have the capacitance here C. There is a flow of current through the capacitance let us say I C which is going to result in a voltage across C and that is V C with this positive and this is negative. So, for this dynamic element C what is the equation we have C d V C by d T is equal to I C. So, this is what we uh, started with. Now, suppose all the quantities were sinusoidal. So, the quantities are sinusoidal then V C will be a sinusoidal function something like V m sin omega t minus phi or something like that one. So, it could be something like d by d t V m sin omega t minus some phase shift arbitrary phase shift let us say this is equal to I C. Now, here we are operating by d by d t. So, when you differentiate V m sin omega t it is going to give be V m cos omega t minus phi with an omega term coming into the picture there. So, it will be omega C V m cos omega t minus phi or this can be written as omega C j into V m sin omega t minus phi or we call it as j omega C into V C and this is equal to your I C. Now, notice this equation j omega c into v c is i c. This has a unit of amps, this has a unit of volts, is not it? This is volts, this is amps. So, what should be the unit of this? So, it should be something connected with the ohms. So, we know that we have a volts divided by ohms will give you the units of amps. So, we have V c into j omega c which is I C or V C divided by 1 by J omega C is equal to I C. So, therefore, comparing this to V c is volts, I c is amps, this should have the units of ohms and this we call it as reactance or capacitive reactance. Of course, there is a j term. So, 1 by j omega c can be written as minus j by minus j square omega c minus j square is 1 therefore, we have minus j into 1 by omega c. 
So, this we call it as capacitive reactance X C X C and there is a phase shift which is corresponding to this J here and the minus J which is a minus 90 degrees uh, uh, minus 90 degrees of rotation in the space vector which would mean it leads that is it occurs before the uh, a normal phase vector. So, therefore, this has a leading effect and here we have capacitive reactance. The capacitive reactance and that is J x c which is this and this has a unit of ohms. X c is 1 by omega c, j is a rotation parameter in the complex domain and minus is to indicate that it is a leading phase not the like. Now, consider the other energy storing element which is the inductor. An inductor L which has the state variable I L flowing through that and there is a voltage across the inductor which we will call it as V L. The dynamic equation for the inductor is L d i L by d t which is equal to the voltage across the inductor which is V L. L d i L by d t is equal to V L is the voltage across the inductor. So, if the current the state variable through that one is a sinusoidal quantity then you have L d by d t I m let us say sin omega t minus phi which is equal to V l even V l will be a sinusoidal quantity with the phase shift of course. Now, we see here again along the same way we have a d by d t I can replace it by j omega. So, you have j omega L I m sin omega t which is I l which is equal to V l. So, here you have the voltage V l which has a units of volts the current here having a units of amps. So, volts will be amps into ohms and therefore, we can say that this should have a unit of ohms and that factor j omega L into I L is equal to V L. This factor is written as j x L and it has a unit of ohms. So, x L is equal to omega This is called the inductive reactance reactance and see the rotation the positive j there which means that it is rotated 
positive in the positive direction by an angle of 90 degrees and with respect to the capacitive reactance it is 180 degrees because capacitive reactance gives a minus 90 and this gives a plus 90 and it is 180 degrees. In fact, it is very evident in the case of uh, uh, the pole 0 plane you will always have complex pole mirroring along the real axis. So, you will have a, a, a pole if you have a pole on the uh, left of top you will have a corresponding mirror pole on the left of bottom and there is a 180 degrees uh, phase difference between these two to indicate that there is a, uh, a resonance action and the resonance can actually occur an oscillation can, can only occur if there are two different types of energy storing elements which is one which is kinetic based and other which is potential based. So, anyway coming back to the uh, equation here we have the inductive reactance which is written here. So, summarizing we have for the steady state sinusoidal condition should remember that only for the sinusoidal condition and for these two components C and the L this is going to provide an a resistance or an impedance which is given by minus J x c and this is going to provide j x l x c is 1 by omega c or I could write as minus j 1 by omega c and this is j into omega l where c is the capacitance value and l here is the inductance value omega here is nothing but 2 into pi into f it is radians per second this frequency f here is in hertz written as h z. So, at any particular frequency radian frequency the capacitance provides a reactance which is 1 by omega c and at for the inductance at any particular frequency omega the reactance provided by the inductor is omega l. So, if you look at this here at omega is equal to 0 what does it mean? When omega is equal to 0 this means the signals are DC. So, at omega is equal to 0 observe that this tends to infinity because omega is at the denominator which means capacitance provides very high reactance infinite reactance which is basically the reason why the capacitance blocks DC. And in the case of the inductance at omega is equal to 0 there is no inductive reactance it is appearing as a short which means that the inductance has saturated it no longer provides any um, uh, at DC it does not provide any impedance. This will be 0. Now, at omega tending to infinity very high frequency very high frequency omega becomes very high. So, during that time the impedance the reactance or the impedance provided the capacitance is very negligible. So, this will tend towards 0 at high frequencies which means it provides a very low impedance path at high frequencies and at high frequencies the inductor gives you a very high reactance or impedance and this tends towards infinity which means it tries to block high frequencies. So, which means it will drop across it all the high frequency this will pass all the 
high frequency components. Whereas on the lower frequency side, this is going to pass the low frequencies, whereas this is uh, not going uh, that is this is going to uh, provide uh, a high impedance at low frequency, which means it is not going to pass low frequencies, and this will uh, pass the low frequencies. Okay. This is one of the important uh, uh, feature that one can uh, know about by, by studying the steady state character. Now, let us look at this simple equation which is obtained from this circuit. So, you have an R and let us say we have a C. So, we have an R and we have a C and let us say we have a V i which provides voltage in this fashion let us say we have a voltage here and of course, a voltage here. Now, R is going to provide a resistance, C is going to provide a reactance and that value is minus J x C which is equal to minus J by omega C that is the reactance this capacitance is going to provide. Now, what will be the current which flows in this loop? What will be the current that flows in this loop? It is nothing but the voltage divided by whatever comes in series. Now, R what comes in series the all the impeding paths would be R minus J x C. Now, this is called the impedance Z. So, the current I will be nothing but V i by Z the impedance. Now, this is also having a unit of ohms. which is basically nothing but V i divided by R minus J x C R is equal to V i by R minus J by omega C to include the omega and the capacitance values in the equation. Okay. So, this is the steady state uh, value. One could also obtain, should note that the state equation is the most general and this is a, a specific case or the special case. Let us look at the state equation of this particular circuit and then see if you uh, substitute the j omega for the d by dt's, you get back the steady state equations. So, you will see that for the circuit, we have already obtained the state equation in a previous session. In a previous session, we have V i, this is R, this is C, we have a voltage and the voltage across C V C which is like that. So, the state equation is dVc by dt is minus 1 by Rc into Vc plus Vi by Rc. Now, the step is that for all the d by dt's you just replace by j omega. In fact, for whatever be the system which is represented as x dot which is equal to a x plus b u. The dynamic equation part of the state equation you can replace 
this by j omega x. That is what we are trying to do here. So, we have j omega v c which is equal to minus 1 by r c v c plus 1 by r c v i and let us take c on this side becomes j omega c v c which is equal to minus 1 by r v c plus 1 by r v i and we know that this is nothing but the capacitive uh, reactance uh, part uh, which can be written as V c by minus J x c which is equal to minus 1 by R V c plus V i by R. So, this can this when you rearrange it that is you take V c on this side and then on rearranging you obtain let us have this circuit with us copy let us paste it here we will obtain by rearranging that V c will be V i by R minus J x c into minus J x c. You see this has a reactance minus J x c. Now, the current through this is nothing but V i by R minus J x c. This is the current through that. This is the current through this loop i into the reactance the into the reactance current into the ohms which will be the voltage across that one. It will be straightforward analysis and this is being obtained directly by the original state equation. So, state equations can be uh, brought into the steady state format, steady state equation uh, analysis just by replacing d by dt with j omega. Likewise, if you see the inductive circuit also, we have R and an L. A V i is the R and the L and of course, here the state equation is I L. We have L d I L by d t equals V i minus I L into R. So, this is basically the state equation which was uh, formulated. The This actually is not the full complete state equation. State equation is always the dynamic equation plus the output equation, but I mean that we need to consider only the dynamic equation here to obtain the steady state uh, relationship. So, this portion this is the d by dt. we replace by j omega. So, what do we get? We get j omega L into I L which is equal to V i minus I L into R. So, what is j omega L? Nothing but j to x L. You see that <coughs> omega L is the inductive reactance into I L which is equal to V i minus I L into R. 
So, take I L into R onto this side, you see that V i equals I L into R plus J X L into I L. You see this is the voltage I L into R is the voltage drop across the resistance J X L into I L voltage drop across the inductance which is V L and we have V I which is here. So, K V L is observe, observe that the K V L is obeyed here that is the summation of the voltages instantaneous voltages V i I l I l into R and J x l into I l they all sum up to 0 every instant of the time therefore, the Kirchhoff's voltage law is obeyed even under steady state conditions. So, that the energy conservation principle is still uh, uh, held. So, this portion is the inductive reactance. So, if I take out I l it becomes R plus J X L. So, this is the inductive reactance, the resistance portion together you have a complex impedance Z. So, V i by I L which is equal to Z the complex impedance which is R plus J X L in this case. So, actually analysis uh, can be done from the state equations, but we know that we are going to do only steady sinusoidal steady state analysis. You can directly do the simplifications on the circuit. For example, let us say we take a, a circuit like this, you have R, you have L, you have C you have let us say another R which is drawn like that. So, this is R 1 L C R 2 and then you have a V i. Now, this L is providing an impedance which is J X L or J omega L at that frequency. And for the case of the capacitance it is providing minus J X C which is nothing but minus j by omega c. This is the impedance that is providing. Now, you can just make all the analysis with just these variables on your circuit. So, you have V i the voltage source, R 1 is the resistance, J x l is the inductive reactance minus J x c is the capacitive reactance, R 2 is the resistance uh, which is connected across the output. So, for example, if uh, one needs to know uh, what is uh, the voltage across the output which is basically this value. So, we have in simple terms like what you would do for resistance R 2 parallel minus J X C divided by R 1 plus J X L plus R 2 parallel minus J X C. This is the attenuation factor. This impedance divided by all the impedances 
taken in series is going to be the attenuation factor into V i will be your V naught. So, this is the input output relationship for sinusoidal excitation V i at the frequency omega at a single frequency omega uh, given as such under the steady state conditions. One could also use to find what is the impedance as seen from here. It's also an input. Uh, uh, it's also a interesting thing to view or study. Let us say we have this. We take that circuit, copy, go to the next page. Let us paste. Push this a bit above. So let us say we have the circuit here we need to find what is the impedance as seen from here that is what is the impedance as seen from here. So, which basically means that that if this was not there we just have this portion of the circuit and we would like to see what we are uh, seeing as an impedance from here to the output portion. So, it is nothing but this in series with this in series with this two together. So, which basically would mean R 1 plus J X L plus R 2 parallel minus J X C. these three in series is going to be the now what does this this imply this basically means that this is r2 minus j x c by r2 minus j x c plus j x l plus r1 this is equal to z. Now, this can be further simplified into real and imaginary parts to get the complex impedance. Now, let us uh, uh, let us take this equation let me copy that let us go to the next page let us paste that push that above. Now, this can be written as R 1 plus J x L plus minus J R 2 x C divided by R 2 minus J x C R 2 plus J x C R 2 plus J x C. This is a algebraic manipulation so that we try to eliminate this. So, if you see this, this will be R 2 square minus J square x C square all other terms cancel and therefore, we have here R 2 square plus x C square. So, there are no j, ter j terms here we want to put all the j terms to the numerator and here you have R 2 square x c minus j plus minus j square R 2 x c square there is a j x l here and an r 1 here. Okay. So, this is this portion here is 1. So, that becomes a real component r 1 
plus R 2 x c square divided by R 2 square plus x c square or the real portion plus j x l minus R 2 square x c divided by R 2 square plus x c square. So, we have basically split the whole impedance into a real part and an imaginary part. This is equal to our z, the complex impedance, complex impedance. This is the complex impedance of this circuit as viewed from the input. So, this is nothing but the input impedance. of that circuit. So, this is some of the types of the analysis that one can keep uh, doing uh, in the, with the sinusoidal steady state uh, models. So, with that let us conclude this session. Thank you.